Our Sunday School lesson today takes a look at the baptism of Jesus. In our lesson today, it opens with us taking a look at a familiar face. We take a look at John the Baptist. John, who we learned last quarter, he is the forerunner of Christ. John the Baptist, he was in the wilderness of Judea. And we're told that all the people of Judea and even those in Jerusalem, that they came out to hear this word that he had to share. John, he wasn't famous. I mean, he was well known, but it wasn't like that you wanted to go and see John because he was very, very popular. No, people that were going to see John were going to see him to hear from him because he was sharing the truth. And it was a truth that the people had gone a long time without hearing. The time between the Testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament, comes to about 400 years where we say that the Lord had gone silent. There were no prophets to prophecy to the people until we get to John the Baptist, who wasn't necessarily sharing about the future to the people, but what he was sharing was that there was one who was coming after him, whose shoes he was not even worthy to loose. He wasn't worthy to tie his shoes or he wasn't worthy to untie his shoes, if you will. John the Baptist, he came with a message of repentance. He was calling on the people to turn from their ways of wickedness and to turn and be obedient to the instructions and to the way of the Lord. And again, many who were in the land of Judea and even those who were in Jerusalem, they were coming out to John the Baptist, not just because he was well known. John was well known, not because he was just famous or not even because he dressed well, because something that scripture makes very clear to us is that John was a man who was unkempt. He didn't dress well. He wasn't wearing fancy suits. He wasn't wearing a fancy tie. He didn't even eat well. We were told that he ate locust and, and wild honey. So it wasn't like they were going out to see this person who was so famous that you had to go out and you had to get his autograph. No, the people, then this should be a lesson for all of us who minister today. They were coming because John was sharing with them the truth. It wasn't like he was in some fancy building. He wasn't in the temple like how the religious leaders were at that day. And again, he wasn't dressed uh, like how the religious leaders were who dressed really fancy. All John had was the truth. And multitudes that came out to hear this truth, they came out to be baptized in this baptism of repentance as well. One of those that came out to be baptized was Jesus Christ. Now, what's very interesting about the baptism of Jesus is the question that I believe many of us would ask. We would ask, well, why did Jesus need to be baptized? Because many of us, we are under the impression that when we are baptized, we are saved. And something that I want to share with you today is that that's not the truth. Anybody can be baptized, but not everybody will be saved. We are saved with the confession that is made in our hearts. For some of us that came before we were baptized and for the rest of us that maybe came after we was baptized, I, I follow under that class of people who were of faith after I was baptized. I was baptized when I was eight years old. I didn't know what faith really was at eight years old. It's something that I share with anybody is the fact that I was baptized, I joined church, because I wanted to partake in communion. I watched my mom, I watched my grandma, and I watched all of those that were around me take this cracker and take this juice and they would eat it and drink it after every service on the first Sunday. And man, did I want to participate in it. And I learned that the only way that I could take part in communion was if I was baptized. So I went up and I joined church so that I could take part in communion. It was several years later that the confession that I had made in the church, it was years later until that confession came true in my heart. And I began to genuinely believe in the Lord for the first time ever. And I began to truly pray. And again, that was many, many years later, about a decade or so later until I genuinely believed in the Lord in my heart. Jesus, he did not come to be baptized to be saved. In fact, Jesus, he didn't come to be baptized to repent. Jesus, again, we know is God in the flesh. He's holy. He's divine. So he did not need to be baptized as a sign of him repenting. And Jesus, he, we are told in scripture, he needed to be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness. 
when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he was excited. He said, behold, this is the Lamb of God. You have to imagine how excited John was because he had been going about preaching and ministering about the one who was coming after him. And behold, there he is, the Lamb of God. And when Jesus came to be baptized, John, he tried to prevent it because he was humble. He was saying, essentially, I'm not worthy to baptize you. You should be baptizing me, is what John the Baptist said. But Jesus, he said, hey, we need to fulfill righteousness here. And so John, he relented. And Jesus, he was baptized to identify himself with us. As we learned last quarter, we have a great high priest who can sympathize with us. He understands what you and I go through. He knows our aches. He knows our pains. He knows our struggles. He knows our affliction. He knows our tribulation because he lived in this world and he's able to connect with us. He's able to identify himself with us because he lived in the flesh. And we find again that Jesus, he was baptized to identify himself with us. We are baptized today, not for it to mean that we are saved. Our baptism is more of an outward confession, an outward confession that we identify with the Lord. We, we identify with the only begotten son. That is why we are baptized. It is that outward confession that we have been washed clean, that we have been washed by Jesus Christ and we have been renewed by Jesus Christ himself. Again, Jesus, he came into this world with the truth, a word of reconciliation. And by this truth, we are saved by the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit. We are transformed from that old man into a new creature. And we no longer live in disobedience. We live in obedience by being obedient to the way of God. Now, something that we find very interesting here with the baptism of Jesus Christ is that when Jesus was baptized, something that scripture points out to us very clear is the type of baptism that Jesus underwent. Jesus, he was dipped in the water and we're told that he came up straightward out of the water. That's very interesting to point out. But something that is even more fascinating is essentially the appearance of God as a whole here at the baptism of Jesus Christ. We we're told that there was a voice that came down from heaven that said that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The father was present at the baptism of Jesus Christ. And of course, the son was there in the flesh being baptized by John the Baptist. Then we see the Holy Spirit like a dove descended from heaven and came upon Jesus. And I tell you today that that is again another connection with us. That is another means that Jesus can identify himself with us because after our confession in our heart, when we genuinely have believed in the only begotten son of God, the Holy Spirit pours itself out onto us. And again, the Holy Spirit resides within us. The Holy Spirit dwells with us for the rest of our days. And the Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit, again, teaches us, calls to remembrance all things that we learned, all things that Christ taught to us. And so the Holy Spirit was with Christ, not to teach Christ anything, right? Not essentially to guide Christ anything. God, again, was with his son through the Holy Spirit, just as he is with us, his children, through the Holy Spirit today. And again, the Holy Spirit is working that transformative work in us turning us, creating us into a new creature, turning us away from that old man, that old person that we once was. So we find at the baptism of Christ that Jesus was again fulfilling all righteousness. We also find that Jesus was identifying himself with those that he were saving. He was identifying himself with mankind. So again, we see how special the baptism of Christ is. We today, we are baptized as again, our outward confession of faith. We are baptized to identify ourselves with the Lord. It is our connection to God as well. So that is the very significance of baptism. Not that baptism means that you are saved, but that it identifies, it connects yourself with the Lord. It is your outward connection or your outward confession, I should say, to the world that you belong to the Lord. Okay? 
All right, so that is our Sunday School lesson this week. Now, there are a few more verses here in our lesson, and scripture-wise, that connects us to our Sunday School lesson next week that I'm going to hold on to. We find that after Jesus was baptized that the tempter, the great deceiver, Satan, approached Jesus and that Satan tried to tempt Jesus. Now, we're going to dive into that in our Sunday School lesson next week, and I hope that you'll come for that Sunday School lesson next week as well. What did we learn this week? Well, we learned that again, Jesus, of course, was baptized. He was baptized to identify himself with us. We also learned this week as well that when we are baptized, it doesn't mean that we are saved. To be saved, it takes confession from within our hearts that we must confess our faith in the Lord inside, in our inner man, in our spirit if we desire to truly be saved. We also learned about John the Baptist as well here in our Sunday School lesson this week, where John the Baptist, he had a message, a message of repentance, where he was calling on all the people to turn away from their ways of wickedness and to turn to the Lord, because the one who was coming after him would not baptize in water, but would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. So that is our Sunday school lesson this week. If you want to dive deeper into our Sunday school lesson this week, there is a commentary that is available at newfoundfaith.org to where you can read the full commentary of our Sunday school lesson, or you can listen to the audio commentary of our Sunday school lesson as well. So again, I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday school lesson next week. And until that time again, I hope and pray that you continue to keep all people lifted up in prayer around you and that you continue to move about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Until that time, I'll again do the same. I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers, and I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.